Hey, everybody. Um, all right. So, <clears throat> first of all, I go to like turn the um, the camera on, and I I feel like I either have a dent in my forehead, which if you know me would not be unlike me, or I just now I'm getting older and I have this vein in my forehead. So, you know, whichever it is, <laughs> let's continue. Um, we'll talk about some really fun things today. Um, I also want to say, please excuse me if my headband goes sliding back. I think my head's a little uneven. Um, so if it starts like creeping off my head, um, I might be a little bit lopsided. So try not to let it bother you. Okay. Um, okay. So I know that my videos that I film in the garage, people like way more. Um, but I just want to say I'm in New Jersey. Two days ago, it was 70 degrees. And right now it is snowing. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening with this weather. It's a little freaky. Um, so once it starts getting warmer and I can keep my stuff outside in the garage, I will definitely start um, filming in there again. All right. So today uh, we're going to talk about free weights versus um, weight machines. Both of these things are forms of resistance training, both of which are really, really good for you um, and have major benefits that I've talked about in previous videos um, and that I can also talk about a little more in future videos if anybody is interested in learning a little bit more. However, um, there are some key differences in these uh, different forms of weightlifting. Um, so I just wanted to spread the word and maybe teach you a little something. Okay, so um, let's talk about weight machines first. Um, you know, those like really huge things that are all over Globo gyms that when you walk in, you're not exactly sure how to use them or like if you should. Um, so weight machines um, are really, really good for beginner weightlifters. This is because um, whether you're sitting or standing or kneeling, um, you can't really break your form very easily. Uh, the machine kind of holds you in one position. Um, which is really good for beginners. And yeah, so it's harder to get hurt um, because these machines are keeping you in one position uh, the whole time you're doing whatever movement it is that you're doing. So yeah, great for beginners. Um, second, it limits planes of movement. Um, so planes of movement are broken up into three different areas. Um, the sagittal plane, which is this way, so front to back. The frontal plane, which is side to side or splits your body into front and back. Sagittal is splits you into side to side. And then transverse, which is like literally imagine a line through your, um, your torso here that separates your body into top and bottom. So weight machines um, limit your use of different planes of movement, which can be beneficial or not so much. Like you wouldn't use weight machines uh, for sports performance at all. Using one plane of movement constantly um, is not the best kind of way to um, improve sports performance, but it is, once again, really good for beginner weightlifters. Um, so I think it's like two months or less um, of resistance training or weightlifting experience is considered a beginner. Um, so yeah, I will post a little um, picture of the planes of movement. Um, another way to think about planes of movement are, I had this really cool professor in grad school um, in like a biomechanics, advanced biomechanics class or something. And he explained it as if you imagine that there's a plane of glass on either side of whatever joint you're moving. So say I'm moving my arms up and away from my body here, right? My shoulders, um, they're abducting, which means I'm moving my arms away from the center of my body. Um, if there was a plane of glass in the front, and a plane of glass in the back on either side of my arm, if I don't break that glass, that means that that is the plane of movement that I'm in. So the frontal plane or the coronal plane would be here and here, right? A glass pane on either side of my arm and I would not break that glass. So that would be the plane of movement that I was moving in for this kind of exercise, okay? okay another um, thing about weight machines, um, they're really great for isolating certain muscle groups. Um, there are machines literally just for your calves or just for your lats. Um, another difference between weight machines and free weights is weight machines can change resistive force throughout a range of motion. Meaning, for example, during a bicep curl. 
um, during the upward movement of a bicep curl, at some point, usually around here, it's going to start to feel a little bit lighter, right? That's like the easier part of the movement. Um, with weight specific kinds of weight machines, um, you can actually adjust the weight so that throughout the whole movement, the weight adjusts with the ability of your the muscle that you're using. So it won't get easy at any point and you can actually get a little bit stronger um, doing things like this um, because you have more resistance on these parts of your muscles that you wouldn't if you were using free weights, which is actually um, really cool. Um, and lastly, weight machines are really great in a lot of ways, um, but they don't normally imitate a lot of everyday movements, meaning, for example, when have you ever done a lat pull down movement, right? It is important that you have strong lats when you do other exercises and movements in everyday life, but that's not necessarily a realistic uh, movement that you would do in everyday life. Um, so yeah, moving on. Um, free weights, let's talk about those. Um, oh, I love free weights. I have probably every kind of free weight. I have sandbags, I have kettlebells, I have med balls, um, dumbbells, barbells, all the different kinds of free weights. Um, so for one, they are way, way less expensive than exercise uh, weight machines. Um, there are literally a trillion different exercises that you can do with them. Um, however, they are not the best thing for beginners to do. Um, so once again, beginners, meaning if you've only resistance trained for like two months or less, um, I might be wrong. I have to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure those are the, the guidelines. Um, free weight training requires greater proprioception, meaning awareness of the positioning and movement of your body, um, and also balance, stabilization, and coordination. So free weights are way harder because of a lot of these things, um, especially if your body has some imbalances. Um, you have to be super careful because your chances of getting injured are way higher. Um, however, if you're an experienced weightlifter, um, free weights are absolutely incredible. Um, they can be used to enhance motor control performance skills, meaning the skills your body uses when you're literally walking around a room, when you're interacting with something, when uh, you're moving around objects in your way, right? Your ability to move your body um, in a functional way um, and be aware of, of your surroundings. Um, free weights are also um, really amazing to use for sports performance. Um, to enhance an athlete's ability to perform their specific sport. Um, and lastly, free weights imitate a lot more um, everyday movements um, than weight machines do. So there we go. Um, so all in all, um, both forms of weightlifting are really amazing for your body, really healthy, um, and they come with endless benefits. So I hope you learned a little about the differences of both and which would be better for you and your exercise routine. Um, thanks for watching, guys.